Uh, okay, Shamrus. We discussed about uh, Siksha Guru and uh, what did we discuss about Shiksha? In Siksha Guru, they uh, got the basic understanding actually who is Siksha Guru. So, and what is that understanding? So, what's the definition we saw? So, who is instructing us for elevating uh, the Krishna consciousness? Yes, we can consider him as a Siksha Guru. Okay, and fine. Siksha Guru can be any. Okay, fine, good. Some other points, go ahead. Uh, we saw how the initiating and inst instructing spiritual masters are equal, many identical manifestations of Krishna because they are repeating the same words of Krishna. Yes, but they are different uh, in dealings. Yes, there could be differences in dealings, right? Okay. We discuss, uh, discussed from NOI who is an advanced devotee. Mm. Srila Prabhupada listed four criteria for Uttama Dikari. Mm. Right. He is following all the rules and regulations. Mm. He is chanting prescribed number of rounds regularly. Mm. And he is seriously engaged in devotional service. And he is always thinking how to spread the movement of Krishna consciousness. Okay, good. Same point. Uh, we discussed that uh, like we cannot legislate the faith on uh, Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru, and Shila like Prabhupada. We cannot legislate. Yes, faith, love, and trust cannot be legislated. Depends upon the individual inspiration. Yet, as uh, as we we are repeating the points again, yet it is very important that all devotees have the three shelters. Hmm? Srila Prabhupada, Shiksha Guru, and Diksha Guru, all three shelters in reasonably good proportions. Hmm? Not that one says, okay, three shelters are required 1% in Srila Prabhupada, 90% in Diksha Guru, 10% in Shiksha Guru. Uh, that would be quite disproportionate. Uh, so there should be a good proportion amongst the three mm. so then that would be healthy for one spiritual progress all right maybe one or two points yes mother well one should not have unrealistic expectations from both siksha and diksha guru yes why yes. As you told that the example of Lord Brahma and Shiva, even mm. they can come under the more so material nature and can commit some mistake in the same way as Siksha and Diksha Guru may also commit sometimes some mistake. Yes. So once to not only Lord Vishnu is free from the modes. Yes, right. So yes, so that not having unrealistically high expectations, but then understanding that yes, the spiritual instructions, the spiritual message, that is perfect. And otherwise, in terms of some material talent, skills, workings, there could be some discrepancies. Right. So we did mention the point. <clears throat> that the criteria for essentially be applied to one's yet at the same time i want to make the point clear that we are not saying i'm emphasizing otherwise somebody will quote me wrong we are not saying that we should not discriminate it's not that close the eyes and accept anyone as shiksha and diksha gurus we are not saying that 
discrimination is essential but not critical analysis hope you understand the difference between the two discrimination is essential that yes we discriminate amongst the various shiksha gurus and diksha gurus on the basis of those criteria which criteria you remember those four criteria uh, so those so essentially if you want to summarize that so who is seriously involved in one's own practice of devotional service in terms of chanting the holy names in terms of following the rules and regulations who is strict in following the process oneself and who is enthusiastic to preach uh, so on the basis of these points discrimination is essential Hmm? Who is strictly connected to Srila Prabhupada? Who is strictly connected to the Guru Parampara? Who is strictly following? Who is enthusiastic to preach? This discrimination is required. Though, yes, even though we say that, yes, all gurus appointed by ISKCON, they're all authorized, some certain minimal criteria have been taken into consideration. Yes. every individual devotee following who may be not so much following and things like that and one should use one's discrimination and also we made that point that on that on that basis then who is inspiring one's faith and devotion to the supreme lord that discrimination is essential but not that sort of discrimination like oh this person is five percent more advanced he's two percent less advanced that sort of analysis that's not required but discrimination is required. Is this point clear? Mm -hmm. So one should not one should not say that oh we have been told in class don't discriminate at all. It is an offense to discriminate. No, we are not saying that. The acharyas very clearly say discrimination is required, uh, but not that type of discrimination where we become critical offensive not that type of discrimination we respect all vaishnavas uh, yet we need to discriminate who's more serious who's not so serious who's inspiring me more that sort of discrimination is this point clear right and uh, and so then uh, why why that is essential is because The more seriously one is following, then the more he's advanced. We may not be able to exactly judge at which level of Madhyam and which level of Uttam and all that. That sort of exact judgment may be difficult, but then the essential principle remains that the more one is advanced, the more there is potency in the sound vibration. There is more potency in the association. The more one is advanced. How do one know who is more advanced? Based upon, based upon who is more serious in one's practice, right? The more one is serious in practice indicates more love for the Lord. More the love, more the attachment, more serious will be the practice, right? And so then more the advancement, then there is more potency in the message. There is more potency in the sound vibration. So just like we find Srila Prabhupada, he spoke simple philosophy. It was not something very bombastic or something out of the world. No, it was simple philosophy. Correct? We all have heard Prabhupada lectures. But what was the potency? Uh, such powerful potency that just by hearing that sound vibration and what what to speak of hearing just by darshan actually uh, so many thousands of people became inspired to take to krishna consciousness in such an unprecedented way uh, that is the potency of the purity mm -hmm. and uh, why as Srila Prabhupada himself writes in the purport to there's a verse if you want you can look it up Maybe we'll read it as it is. Fourth Canto, 20th chapter, 25th verse. 
Somebody got it? Okay. So the first is, uh, is who are glorified by the selected verses uttered by great personalities. Such glorification of your lotus feet is just like saffron particles. When the transcendental vibration from the mouths of great devotees carry, carries the aroma of the saffron dust of your lotus feet, the forget-thiving entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you. Devotees thus gradually come to the right conclusion about the value of life. My dear Lord, I therefore do not need any other benediction but the opportunity to hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. Hmm. Yes, so Prabhupada writes in the purport that it is explained in the previous it is explained in the previous verse that one has to be a glorification of the Lord from the mouth of a pure devotee. This is further explained here. The transcendental vibration from the mouth of pure devotee is so powerful that it can revive the living entity's memory of his eternal relationship with the supreme personality of God. It's, and then he says that we are sleeping under the influence of uh, Maya. And uh, so must get up. Yes, now this is the important point. A pure devotee always engages in the service of the Lord, taking shelter of his lotus feet. And therefore, he has a direct connection with the saffron mercy particles that are strewn over the lotus feet of the Lord. I repeat the statement, very important. A pure devotee always engages in the service of the Lord, taking shelter of his lotus feet. Always engages. And therefore, because of that constant engagement in the Lord's service, therefore, he has a direct connection with the saffron mercy particles that are strewn over the lotus feet of the Lord. Although, when a pure devotee speaks, the articulation of his voice may resemble the sound of this material sky, the voice is spiritually very powerful because it touches the particles of saffron dust on the lotus feet of the Lord. As soon as a sleeping living entity hears the powerful voice emanating from the mouth of a pure devotee, he immediately remembers his eternal relationship with the Lord, although up until that moment he had forgotten everything for a conditioned soul therefore it is very important to hear from the mouth of a pure devotee who is fully surrendered to the lotus feet of the lord without any material desire speculative knowledge or contamination of the modes of material nature And then Prabhupada is concluding the purport by saying, therefore, this process of hearing from the mouth of a pure devotee is very important for making progress in the line of spiritual understanding. Thank you. All right. So, therefore, that discrimination needs to be made as to who is constantly engaged, seriously engaged. That discrimination needs to be made because the more that seriousness is there, then more the devotee is in touch with the saffron mercy particles and the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. And then that sound vibration has much more potency. So that discrimination needs to be made. Is the point clear? Hmm? So we are not saying 
don't discriminate. Hmm. But then appropriate, respectful discrimination, not critical offensive analysis. Okay, so we will proceed now to the next lesson. Lesson seven, initiation vows. <laughs> the first point under this is uh, qualities of a disciple. Mm. So what do you think are some of the qualities a disciple should have? Mm? Yes, some Discipline. Okay, yes. Robert did say disciple means discipline. Mm. What else? Well, Faith on a spiritual master. Faith but... on spiritual master. Good. Mm. Okay, you said something. Bian. Grateful and obedient. Grateful and obedient to? A spiritual master. Okay, good. Surrendered. Surrendered to? A spiritual master. They can be surrendered to Maya also. <laughs> Therefore, we are clarifying. Be considering himself insignificant in front of his which must. Okay, good. Insignificant, humble attitudes. Fearful of material nature and enthusiastic uh, for spiritual advancement. Okay, fearful of Maya, enthusiastic to serve. Faithfully following the instructions of the spiritual master. Faith following instructions. Submissive to the spiritual Submissive. He should have some distaste for material life. Distaste for material life. Self-control. Self-control. Eager to hear from you. Hmm? Uh, eager to hear from you. Eager to hear from? Spiritual master. From the spiritual master. He should have faith and dedication towards faith and dedication. Okay, fine, good. So these are some of the qualifications. Um, we could recollect that famous statement which Srila Prabhupada makes in the first canto, fifth chapter. I don't remember the exact verse number purport, where Srila Prabhupada says, unless one is self-controlled, unless one is disciplined, and unless one is fully obedient. No one can be successful in following the instructions of the spiritual master, and without doing so, no one can be successful in going back home back to God. So, Srila Prabhupada has encapsulated all the required qualities of a disciple under those three headings. What are they? Okay, thank you for the reference. 1524. Hmm? Unless one is self-controlled next disciplined and fully obedient hmm. fully obedient then one can be successful in following the instructions and then one can be successful in going back home back to god it's hmm. okay there's a quote from the shrimad bhagavatam in your books you could read that on your own okay fine so the so as we have been discussing in one of our previous classes, so one receives the Bhakti Lata Beach from the spiritual master. What is the Bhakti Lata Beach? We defined it. There we more precise. Uh, Abhinav, one one thing is missing. Yes, methods, rules, and regulations by which a disciple is trained in Krishna consciousness constitute the Bhakti Lata Beach. And so therefore, essentially, yes, essentially there are rules and regulations which the spiritual master gives to the disciple to follow. And when he follows, so he hears and then he follows. So when he does that, 
then that's how the Bhakti Lata Beach grows into the Bhakti Lata and then the Bhakti Lata further progresses. So, uh, within the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, at the time of initiation, all disciples are supposed to take vows before the spiritual master. And we all know what are the vows chanting minimum number of 16 rounds on the beads uh, on the beads uh, not on clickers and what not. <clears throat> and the four regulator principles no meeting probably mm, some sometimes he would say including fish Mm. And then no intoxication, including tea and coffee, mm. no illicit sex, and no gambling. Mm. There's one one initiation lecture where Prabhupada, when he speaks about no gambling, he also says no unnecessary sports. Mm and wastage of time so uh, so so the four regulative principles they represent what what do they represent uh yes bro okay so so they represent the what are these four yes the four pillars of dharma mm -hmm. so uh, so which which one of them breaks which pillar Daya goes to mercy. Tapa austerity means no. Uh, Daya means mercy, right? Yes. So no, no immediate. Oh yes, that's yeah. what I want. Okay. Mm. So and next is uh, tap tapa tapasya austerity. Mm. Mm, it... So what? Which sinful activity breaks tapasya? No intoxication. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And. I think cleanliness, short term and short term. Mm. So cleanliness, no illicit sex, and mm. short term. Mm, and Fourth last one, one mm. Satyam, Sat Sat yeah. yeah, truthfulness. Mm. Uh, it goes to no gambling. Yes. Okay. Fine. So that's how the four regulative principles uh, help one to maintain the four principles of dharma. And so therefore, Ashley Prabhupada often explained that if one is breaking these uh, four regulated principles, one is performing sinful activities. And so when one is performing sinful activities, then it is very difficult. As mm. Yes, OK, we'll read this quote of Ashley Prabhupada. Okay, fine, read. It is not very difficult to follow the four regulative principles. These things should be stopped if you will want, want to be serious. Otherwise, make, make a farce and do whatever you'd like. I cannot give you protection. That is not possible. Continue. So, you must have to follow these rules and regulations. If you are serious, then take initiation. Otherwise, don't make farce. Don't make farce. That is my request. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhupada is speaking quite heavily here. And we will see some other quotes also. But Prabhupada, he's saying here that uh, the sinful activities have to be stopped. One has to be serious. Otherwise, it's simply a farce, simply a show. Don't simply make a show. Do whatever you like. If you do whatever you like, I cannot give you protection. Important point to note. So one could have a Mahabhagavat spiritual master like Srila Prabhupada. But ultimately, it is the responsibility of every disciple to follow. Not that my spiritual master is Mahabhagavat and I do any nonsense and 
he will take me back to gardens it doesn't work that way uh -huh. ultimately every disciple needs to follow the rules and regulations otherwise proper the saying here you don't follow i can't give you protection uh -huh. so the protection of the spiritual master comes the protection of the vaishnavas comes when one follows so when Srila Prabhupada explains in the Chaitanya Charitamrit purports about the fencing of the Bhakti Lata, the protection of the Bhakti Lata, what does it refer to? Association of devotees and following the regulative principles means essentially following all the rules and regulations, not just the four, but all rules and regulations. So following the rules and regulations is what gives protection to the Bhakti Lata. Because by following the rules and regulations, that attracts the mercy of Guru and Krishna. And that mercy is what gives protection. Hmm? So that endeavor, that responsibility to follow, that lies on the disciple. And so Srila Prabhupada is saying, that if one thinks one cannot follow, don't take initiation. Hmm? Then, so you must have to follow. If you are serious, then take initiation. So if you can't follow, then don't take initiation. Because otherwise, it's simply a farce. And if one doesn't follow, even after initiation, or at least one is sincerely trying to follow on the path of Vedi Sadhana Bhakti, ups and downs could be there, but at least a sincere attempt to follow. If that is not there, then as Rupa Goswami explains in the Nectar of Devotion, that if after initiation one does not follow the various rules and regulations, then one is fallen. And then, if one commits sinful activities, then the spiritual master may have to face sinful reactions of the disciple. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. We have that quote here. I don't know if I can remember the right quote. Uh, just check. Ninth canto, ninth chapter, verse number five. Yes, that's right. My memory is still not so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. A few lines down the purport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Prabhupada is starting with Sarodharman Parityaja, and then he says, The Supreme Personality of Godhead can accept the reactions of anyone's sinful deeds and neutralize them. Who can do that? The Supreme Personality. Because he is Pavitra, pure, like the sun, which is never contaminated by any worldly infection. Tejasam na doshaya vane sarva bujo yatha. One who is very powerful is not affected by any sinful activity. But here we see that Mother Ganges fears being burdened with the sins of the people in general who would bathe in the waters. This indicates that no one but the Supreme Personality of Godhead is able to neutralize the reactions of sinful deeds, whether one's own or those of others. Point clear? Sometimes, the spiritual master, after accepting a disciple, must take charge of that disciple's. What's what's this come up here? Yeah. Uh, 
Sometimes the spiritual master, after accepting a disciple, must take charge of that disciple's past sinful activities and being overloaded, being overloaded, must sometimes suffer, if not fully, then partially, for the sinful acts of the disciple. Every disciple, therefore, must be very careful not to commit sinful activities after initiation. The poor spiritual master is kind and merciful enough to accept a disciple and partially suffer for that disciple's sinful activities. But Krishna, being merciful to his servant, neutralizes the reactions of sinful deeds for the servant to engage us in preaching his glories. Okay, so sometimes when the spiritual master becomes overloaded, Prabhupada is writing, overloaded, that means too many disciples are committing too many activities. There's overloads. Then the spiritual master may have to suffer so that disciples get an occasion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it's not an overload, then yes, then Krishna can neutralize. Krishna neutralizes. But when there's an overload, then Krishna wants to give a message to the disciples and maybe even to the Guru that these people are not following. As Prabhupada did say towards his uh, late, later years, later days of his manifest past time when he became very sick then Prabhupada did say that i became sick because many of my disciples are not following the vows um, and so then the spiritual master may have to suffer so therefore Prabhupada is writing that the disciple needs to be very careful that he's following the vows properly otherwise the spiritual master may have to suffer and so Srila Prabhupada, in his lecture, he says that he, quote, he quotes the Christians. So the Christians say, we will continue to perform sinful activities and Jesus will suffer for our sins. So Prabhupada says, what nonsense is this? First of all, Jesus has come to save you. And what, what do you give in return? You give your sinful reactions for him to suffer. This is gratitude. Mm. So, so Prabhupada says, what, what sort of activity is that? So if one is really grateful to the spiritual master for having saved one, that was, that's what Prabhupada is writing. The poor spiritual master is uh, already uh, he's, uh, taking the trouble to deliver the disciple. So then if one is grateful, then one should be extremely careful not to commit sinful activities by which the spiritual master is burdened or is put into suffering condition. Hmm. Great. My my advice is always that always chant sixteen rounds minimum and follow the four regulative principles. All of my disciples must agree on this point, otherwise they are not my disciples. My disciples must follow these principles, living either in heaven or hell. Hmm. That's Prabhupada's expectation heaven or hell or anywhere in between hmm. one needs to follow that's the meaning of vow uh, that's the meaning of vow so one takes vows before the spiritual master before the vaishnavas before the sacred fire before the deities it's not a joke hmm. serious business uh, and so therefore taking a vow means at all times, wherever, at all times, place, circumstances, one cannot give up following the vow. That is many of vow. Huh? But sometimes we do find that devotees take it so cheaply, so cheaply. Huh? 
and after initiation we have seen devotees not chanting 16 rounds and they take it very casually what to do no time can't be taken like that then it comes under which offense guru avagya serious offense it's a very serious offense Prabhupada writes in the chaitanya chaitanya purports guru avagya uh, can cause great havoc in one's life so therefore one has to follow in all circumstances Prabhupada says if they don't follow they are not my disciples and that's the point we are emphasizing that the connection to the spiritual master the connection to the parampara comes from following the instructions when the instructions are not followed one could say i'm disciple of so and so but the connection is broken when one does not follow the connection the potency comes from the following And to the degree one seriously follows, to that degree one gets the potency. Okay, uh, read this. Um, maybe we can read this later on. Uh, yes, on page number 40, read the last quote there. Then you are not even a gentleman, what to speak about devotee? Hridayananda. He wants to know if the greatest offense is to be, is to disobey the, disobey the Guru, Prabhupada. Yes, that is the first offense. Guru Ravagya. Guru Ravagya Sruti Shastra Nindanam. Sruti Shastra Nindanam Guru Ravagya. If you accept Guru and again disobey him, then what is your position? You are not a gentleman. You promise before Guru, before Krishna, before fire, that I shall obey your order. I shall execute this and again you do not do this. Then you are not even gentleman. What to is, what is speak about devotee? This is common sense. Mm. There is one uh, question answer session. It's not quoted here. But after a question, after a lecture, one devotee is asking Srila Prabhupada, what if one is not able to follow the regulative principles after initiation? And Prabhupada's spontaneous answer, then he is an animal. That was Prabhupada's reply. And then he clarifies. He says, because only an animal does not have determination. If somebody is a human being, then he should have determination. So somebody has taken vows and then he does not agree to follow. He has no determination to follow. Therefore, he is an animal. Mm -hmm. And then Prabhupada again makes the same points that if, if he is not able to follow, then why did he take initiation in the first place? He should not take initiation then if he's not going to follow. So Prabhupada was on quite a few occasions was very heavy and strict on these principles. Okay, fine. So um, maybe just make groups of three or four devotees and uh, you could discuss some of uh, the ch challenges and some suggested solutions in following these initiation vows that means chanting 16 rounds and following the four regulative principles so what could be some possible challenges and some suggested solutions so just make groups take about five minutes and just note down 
on page number 39, you have a box out there, or you can write in your notebooks. So a few challenges and suggested solutions. and suggested solutions.
Okay, Hare Krishna, I think so that's uh, enough time for now. Somebody would like to write here? Okay, so you make two columns, challenges and solutions, or maybe you will write challenges there and solutions here. Okay, so every group can tell one challenge and a possible solution. Okay, begin. Haribo, begin. Yes, hmm. like previous conditionings. More precise? Is a challenge to what? So tell something more precise. Uh, bad habits. Uh, okay, bad habits is a challenge to what? To following what? Right, bad habits. Is a challenge to what? Right, uh, illicit sex. Okay, fine. So basically, the four regulative principles. Okay, fine. Possible solution? Uh, intense bhakti, like uh, it can burn the. Um, intense bhakti, being... again, too general. Something more precise. Uh, attentive chanting. Okay, attentive chanting. Okay, fine. Attentive sadhana practices, you can say. Attentive sadhana practices. Next. Hmm. Uh, temptations of Maya. Uh, in following... Temptations of Maya, there are how many temptations? Of Maya? <laughs> <laughs> temptations of Maya in following four regulative principles. Say something precise. <laughs> Who, who else was in your group? Ah, Bolo. Another thing, actually. That he is not properly trained and educated in his spiritual science. Okay, good. Improper training and education. Hmm, solution? He should be trained in Sambandha Gyan. Okay, so give proper training. Okay, fine. Next. Uh, facing challenges, how to deal with uh, Mataji and other... Okay, dealing devotees. with opposite sex. So what's the challenge? So what's the challenge in dealing with opposite sex? Then uh, they fall down and not follow the initiative. We're not asking the result. I'm asking what's the challenge? Bhakti, uh, the level of intensity can decrease. And when, when you're, we can you're telling consequences, Baba. I'm asking you, what's the challenge? Krishna Samaj mein aagya? When can indulge in illicit sex? Who else is in your group? So, like uh, we have some previous habits of taking so much tea in our previous before coming to you're changing process. your point huh? <laughs> I, 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 am, I am telling some other what, point what, what, what challenge you're talking about we have given our points I'm telling my point what's the challenge in dealing with the opposite sex
Okay, somebody else has a point on what's the challenge in dealing with the opposite sex? Uh. It breaks the regulatory principle of. Oh, no. Chunauti, Chunauti. <laughs> you can have loose dealings with opposite sex okay that's the challenge loose dealings loose dealings with the opposite sex and uh, that's the challenge so basically of course arises because of the enjoying mentality which is the root cause of mental existence yes but that's the challenge lose dealings what's the solution uh huh stay away stay away where will you go <laughs> there there is there's one past time there's one past where brahmacharis were complaining to Srila Prabhupada about too many ladies in the temple and this and that. So Prabhupada said, if you're so disturbed, go to the forest. Let the brahmacharis go to the forest. Uh -huh. So what's the solution? Huh? Don't deal. Huh, Mother Prabhu? Don't deal privately. Have some devotee with you. Yes, that's one good solution. Yes, no private dealings. No private dealings and what else? Uh, okay, Abhinav. Dealings only for uh, service. For yes, dealings only for service. Mm. Mm, yes, Shambhal. Remembering the instruction given by the senior. Okay, okay. remembering instructions given by seniors, given by Shastra, the butter and fire principle. Mm. So in that in that connection, maybe uh, you're aware of these two pastimes of how Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Shri Prabhupada set the proper standard of dealings with the opposite sex. Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, Prabhupada himself tells the story mm, of how there was uh, Doctor Kapoor when he was a newly initiated young man. And he and his young wife went to meet Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. I mean, they went to attend a class. And then after the class, then the wife, uh, she told Bhakti Thakur that I want to speak to you privately. And Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur said, no. Anyway, they're all my disciples. You can speak. Hmm? This is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Mahabhagavat, powerful Simha Guru. Uh, and he was quite elderly at that time, but yet so strict. And then there's the other pastime in the case of our Srila Prabhupada. So once uh, he was speaking with uh, Mahabuddhi Prabhu, one of his disciples, and uh, as is speaking, his sister, Pishima, she walks into the room and then uh, she starts a conversation and then both of them are conversing in Bengali and uh, Mahabuddhi Prabhu, he thinks, oh, why do I sit here, the tongue in Bengali and what, what am I going to do here? So he, he stands up to leave the room and Prabhu says, sit down. He gets frightened, what happened? Huh? So anyways, he, he sits down and uh, the conversation went in 10, 15 minutes, whatever. And then after that, she left. And uh, so he was curious. Mahabhati Prabhu asked Shri Prabhupada, Prabhupada, wh why did you tell me to sit down? Uh, I, I couldn't understand anything what was happening. Prabhupada said, Matra, Swasra, Dhuhitra, uh -huh. Now, what was the age of Prabhupada? What was the age of his sister? Both of them are in their late 70s. And yet, 
so straight. Just to set the standard, just to show the example that how one must be always very careful. And then I'm sure most of you know the story of uh, uh, Vyasdev and uh, Jemini Rishi. You know that story? Most of you know? No? Who knows? Okay, give to Mother Bro. <laughs> bolo, bolo. Once when Vaisdu was uh, telling his disciple to write this sloka, Mata Spasudutra, so he was thinking in his mind that this is too much. Who was thinking? Jam Jamini Rishi. Jam Rishi. So he was saying, Guru is too okay, much. Okay, everyone right? knows the verse. The verse says that one should not sit alone in a solitary place, even with one's mother, sister, daughter. or daughter. So somebody may think, Oh, that's for some fools, low class people. But what does the verse say? Balwan Indriya Gramo Vidwan Sapikar. Vidwan Sapikar Shuti. Vidwan. Even a Vidwan, even a very great learned person, he will also fall down. Okay, go ahead. So he was thinking in his mind is too much like fanatism. So Bhyasdu understood actually that he's thinking is too much. So he told that I'm going outside for some work. Maybe I'll come back after some time. You be here in the cortex alone. Take care of the cortex. So he went. Ashram. Ashram. So he went and one night there was heavy raining as it was today. So <laughs> maybe more than this. Yeah. this not much. Hmm. Then Jemni Rishi was alone in his ashram. So one lady, a beautiful lady, he was just knocking. She mm. was just knocking the door. So he opened and immediately he asked, he became alert. Mm. Because he was Brimchari, I think. Mm. So, so he became alert. So he asked what happened. So she told, actually, I lost my father here in the jungle. I want some shelter. I'm alone here. So then he thought for some time, then he told her that you come inside the ashram and I will be outside for the entire night. And you please do not open the gate, even if I know it also. So they agreed. So that lady went inside the ashram and he came out of the ashram and he was just waiting outside. And, but he actually, the contemplation started in his mind at night, that house. So immediately the contemplation grows, grows and see, he becomes so disturbed actually in his thought. So then he was knocking the door that please open. So she told, no, no, you only told that I should not open. So he told, now I am only telling, please open the gate. So she refused actually. And he became so disturbed, so agitated that he just climbed on the roof of that ashram and just tore open that roof of the ashram and jumped inside. The lady became so fearful. Mm. So then he told, I actually want to marry mm. that Jamni Rishi. So that lady put one condition. Okay, okay, I can marry you, but the condition is that from some distance from that ashram, you first become a like something like and you're extending the story. Yes, really? You're extending the story. See, like two, three times I have heard different different speakers. So anyway. <laughs> so that is that is called adding masala to the story. So anyway, anyway, so that till that point definitely is correct. And basically, so he jumps inside. And he tries to embrace the lady. And when he tries to embrace the lady, then the lady removes the cloth on the top and there was Vyasthe. <laughs> and so Vyasthe said, now you understood? <laughs> so that's how uh, one needs to be very careful because even such exalted personalities could be agitated by the opposite sex. Because as Lord Kapila says in the third canto of the Bhagavan, save and accept Narayan, no one is free from sex agitation. Only Narayan is free. So therefore, understanding that these are very deep-rooted 
conditionings and impulses if one wants to progress in, in, on the spiritual path one needs to be extremely careful whoever one is huh okay some other challenges who's the next group there Ah, ah, bolo, bolo. Like difficult, difficulty in completing 16 rounds due to workload. Okay. Completing 16 rounds due to workload. Mm. Solution? He should plan his life such a way that, that he, in accordance, that he, he will be able to follow all these initiation vows. Nice. Okay, fine. Good planning planning scheduling okay next uh, dealing with internet uh, like uh, handling internet is, uh, may be difficult for someone like mm -hmm. uh, okay you can put that mm. solution is means like we can uh, put some controls whatever and we can be under guidance we can use with some devotee okay fine so uh, restricted use restricted use okay fine next uh, okay uh, give it to somebody online some online devotees are writing so one devotee is writing challenges are from within the family with the within the family <laughs> solution here not given with what challenges for what i don't know somebody is writing laziness laziness for what i i don't know what <laughs> but he's saying the solution laziness is to chant 16 rounds ah. associate with enthusiastic devotees and by mm. serving them mm. laziness uh, challenges for chanting Achha, so then. and laziness associated with enthusiastic devotees okay laziness to chant mm. solution is association enthusiastic devotees and by serving them Mm. One devotee is asking one question also. Uh, later. Challenge too much engage in materialist activity by which one is not able to practice bhakti, whether uh, whatever vows he she has taken. And then uh, lack of determination is on the devotee's writing. Challenge. Okay, lack of determination. Solution is saying association of senior devotees as per one's uh -huh. capacity okay, or fine. taking some preaching responsibility. Mm. Challenge is one. Okay, is... Okay. Mm. Uh, here, uh, give to Samit. Low inspiration in Bhakti. Some, sometimes devotees Low inspiration. live alone and after one, two years, they lose that, that determination to chant 16 round or 10. Why yoga, yeah, na? Lack of determination. They don't feel inspired to chant and this without. Association. Okay, not inspired. Not inspired. To follow, mm, what's the solution? Good, good association. Okay, the solution still remains association. Yes, some, some points there. The our budget with the ah, oh, group, hey, now, I'll points are covered. Points covered. Okay, fine. Somebody else has some other points. Okay, you talk enough. Committing offense to Vaishnavas, yes, Vaishnava offense, Vaishnava Prad. Leads to what? Uh, one loses the mercy of the uh, taste, the determination. Yes, yes, he loses taste and determination to follow. Okay, so what's the solution? Solution is uh, pleasing the Vaishnavas and being humble. Okay, fine. So try and being careful, careful in dealings with Vaishnavas. Okay, fine. So like that, there could be so many challenges and suggested solutions. So okay, thank you. That's fine. So not taking everything. Okay, a quote from Srila Prabhupada, please read. Whoever is the mic, read. Mm. If still you are unable to fulfill that promise to your spiritual master, then what is the use of calling yourself devotee and disciple? That is simply uh, pretending pretending so you should think like this that i have promised my spiritual master this now i must obey him without any exception otherwise i have no business calling myself his disciple 
continue please that will be your austerity or tapasya for forcing you to make very rapid advancement in krishna consciousness understanding without tapasya there is no question of making advancement but if you want to call yourself devotee and serve krishna in that capacity then you must avoid these four basic principle restrict uh, restrictions under all circumstances without any exception yes all circumstances without exception okay continue of course once twice krishna may excuse that is not very difficult but more than that it will become very difficult for krishna to ex excuse you and the the air is great risk that everything will be lost despite all of your time and efforts spent yes so krishna can excuse the spiritual master can excuse sometimes but not always hmm so then the point is the purifying process so if it if at all one commits some sinful activities what is the price chitta what is the purifying process okay read that according to the vedas there is a certain regulation that if one falls down from his exalted position he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself but here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of a devotee due to his remembering the supreme personality of god constantly therefore the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare should be continued without stopping right so this is the purport to the verse shubham bhakti dharmatma shashva shanti nirchati so the so there is no separate price shuddha that is required for for any sinful activities mistakes committed on the path of devotional service so the price chitta is devotional service itself because by the practice of devotional service one gets purified so one could increase one could intensify one's practice of devotional service maybe one can chant some extra rounds or do some extra service to purify oneself if one has committed some sinful activities read this this is the tag of war this is your book this is tug of war so don't be afraid of maya simply enhance chanting and you will be conquered that's all krishna says onte prajit pratijani na me bhakta pranashyati you just declare my devotee will never be vanquished by maya maya cannot do anything simply you have to become, become strong and what is that strength chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare loudly yes hmm. okay so that's what will give us protection from maya okay any questions on the topic yes Hare Krishna, Guruji. Uh, can you explain a little bit more details regarding gambling? What includes gambling? What includes gambling? So, uh, so gambling includes uh, anything which is a waste of time and leads to mental agitation. Hmm. So, you know better what people do in the outside world. Uh, gambling away their lives and time hmm. and money. So, of course, uh, in the Western world, they have casinos. I don't know whether they're there in India. They're there. And that's called progress. Hmm? Progress. So, and people gamble money and so many things lost. And so, Prabhupada also includes all these activities which basically waste time under gambling. Hmm. So. 
so I, if it's not going to help us progress in devotional service, then it's a gamble. Mm -hmm. We see people playing cards for hours together, wasting time. Mm -hmm. All that is can. Chicken. Mm. Okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, Eggman. Uh, mm. Yeah. Basically, means wasting time includes gambling. Yes, okay. wasting time and useless activities. Mm. Thank you. Abul. Online, one devotee is asking, what about uh, for a krasta who is doing business? Uh, because in business, he cannot run business without any false promises. So how to overcome that? So Prabhupada explains in his purpose in the Bhagavad Gita. So a Vaishya can tell a simple lie uh, to the customer that for you, my dear customer, I'm making no profits. So Prabhupada says that simple lie is essential in business. So that's a part of the fault of the profession fault of the Vaishya profession. So that sort of simple lie is uh, is permitted. But then if it leads to greed and then one gets into too much of lying and cheating, then that's that will lead to reactions. But if it's for just some basic maintenance, one has to tell some simple lie that's allowed. Chika? Something else? Mm. Like you told about gambling, also like like besides gross gambling, there is uh, like it increases subtly, subtly also. Mm -hmm. So similarly, this illicit sex also has some subtler aspects. So even uh, like breaking, uh, one may break in mind or one may uh, it means in any other means. So yeah. So Prabhupada quotes from Yajna, so that includes even on the platform, even within the minds. So thinking, then even making plans and so on and so forth. Oh. So this is like breaking off for like Rex. Yes, yeah, so of course, in in the conditioned state, then in the mind, that could be difficult because the mind has so many sanskaras and impressions and things may be there. So, uh, and on the path of Vedi Sadhana Bhakti, then one keeps on trying to purify the mind. Therefore, man mana. Therefore, to the degree one tries to purify the mind by thinking of Krishna, by chanting the holy names, by engaging in service. That's how one purifies the mind. And then one, uh, one replaces all these vasanas and all these impressions with Krishna conscious impressions and that's how gradually over a period of time depends on how deep the conditionings are but then gradually over a period of time also depends upon the intensity of devotional practices then gradually one can get purified uh, but then at least things should not go to the gross platform mm. so on the subtle platform well that's more difficult but then uh, at least things should not go to the grasp. Because so, till the time like one has this, even in subtle form, mm -hmm. so will reactions will come. Like, at least in Kali Yuga, things on the subtle platform and the minds, no reactions. The spiritual master will also. But then if one is not careful, then it will come, it, the subtle may become grass. So therefore, then one, shy, one should try to eradicate even on the subtle platform. Hmm. See, <clears throat> like uh, Prabhupada, uh, like Prabhupada is was telling, there like <clears throat> you know, like two times, three times, will spiritual master will uh, means Krishna will excuse. Uh, sorry, Krishna will excuse. But uh, <clears throat> like <clears throat> project after <clears throat> like initiation, uh, after initiation, yeah, if uh, like due to his past conditioning and all, like uh, he's falling down, then again, then again, he's intensifying his bhakti, then again, he's falling down, then again, he, 
so how many times like how much how many times like understand the principle hmm? understand the principle the principle is that uh, one should be sincere hmm? one should be sincere in trying to strictly follow and uh, so then one can pray to the lord one can intensify one's devotional service and then one can gradually try to overcome the various conditionings and uh, the various uh, challenges in one's practice and so if one is sincere then krishna will excuse mm. and then as uh, prabhupada explains in his lectures that if one is sincere and serious prabhupada used these two words quite often if one is sincere and serious in one's devotional practices then very soon all these uh, demonic qualities and all these bad habits and everything will become nil so prabhat gives the example of the fan so just like if you switch off the fan it doesn't stop immediately it takes some time before it stops fully so similarly when one begins the practice of devotional service then all this is not going to stop immediately it is going to take some time but then if the switch is off then eventually the fan should stop if it doesn't stop then there's some problem Mm. so so similarly if uh, one is sincerely and seriously practicing then eventually things should gradually reduce and come to a point of nil okay that's the essential principle but that time like matlab uh, <clears throat> that time to come to nil is not like defined now okay how much time will take that depends on our own practice that depends on intensity of our own practice and so prabhupada explains this in the purport to apichet sudura charo bhajate imam ananya bhag so there he specifically uses the word accidental seven times in the purports mm-hmm. to emphasize the point that krishna is ready to excuse accidental fall downs so accidental means it's not premeditated it's not planned but by the force of the material energy as proper explains that purport that devotional service is a war against maya and so therefore in the war on the battlefield sometimes one can get injured so similarly in the war against maya so sometimes there is a possibility that one can succumb so it's not planned the best example is a jamil so jamil didn't go to the forest to see anything wrong but then he accidentally happened to see and then his uh, previous conditioning came up and then he was affected so similarly if uh, it is unplanned it is accidental and then due to the force of previous conditionings one succumbs then but at the same time bhajate imam ananya bhag if the serious practice is there there's repentance an important point the acharya explains repentance so a sincere devotee repents Prabhupada writes in the Parikshit Maharaj's pastime, repentance comes in the heart of a good soul when he commits a mistake. Hmm? So, uh, repents when he commits a mistake. Hmm? And so then Shri Prabhupada explains that sinful reactions are burnt up in the fire of repentance. So when one sincerely repents in front of the Lord, then and prays to the lord then krishna excuses then the sinful reactions are burnt up and then he intensifies his practice of devotional service okay i've been my question is regarding the use of smartphones and uh, laptops internet like uh, nowadays especially due to the this era of online preaching and other services are also mostly are on online and uh very much use of internet is there so can you please tell some uh, regulatory ma- measure apart from this uh, parental control because sometimes many even sincere and uh, sincere devotees also get uh, succumb to temptations so can you please tell uh, how we can do service also at the same time a strong determination is there to follow the initiation vows mm it depends on one's own strength of determination 
So if one is weak and one has a fear of uh, succumbing to temptations, then it's better not to use the internet alone. Then always have some devotee. Mm. So if one has that fear, which is a healthy fear, it's good to have that healthy fear. So if one has that fear and one, one has a risk of uh, succumbing temptations, then better not to use the internet alone. Have somebody else be with them, if possible. And then at the same time, of course, then intensify one's practice of devotional service, the chanting of the holy names and everything else. Uh -huh. And uh, um, and then minimal usage, uh, not unnecessarily using, but only when it is absolutely required, then only using. This is what I can immediately think of. I don't know if there are some other technical ways and means. I don't know. Hmm. One devotee is asking from this one quote on page 39. Hmm. Uh, that uh, you have asked if it is true that the spiritual master mm. remains in the material universe until all of his disciples are transferred to the spiritual sky. I was just expecting that. The answer is yes, this is the rule. So, this, uh, Pruji, you told this is not compulsory, this is arrangement of Krishna. Please clarify. The answer is there in the question. You have already said the answer. You got the answer? Hmm. So yes, it is true. It is true, yes, that the spiritual master will come to save the disciple. But as we already explained right in the first class, that the original guru is Krishna. And Krishna will make some arrangements for the deliverance of the disciple. So it's not that the same personality or the same jiva who is serving as the guru and gives the service, it's fine. If Krishna sends somebody else to act in that capacity, that's fine. But Krishna will make the arrangement. All right? Any last question? Good. Thank you very much. Sri La Prabhupada Ki Jai, Samvet Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. So we'll continue tomorrow morning with the rest of the lessons.